Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make an eight page mini book in Microsoft Publisher 2013. If you're using versions of Publisher other than 2013, navigation to the template we'll be using might be a little different, but it will still be one of the options you have with Publisher. We're going to click on more blank page sizes to find the booklet template. Scroll down to Publication Types and choose the folder that says Booklets. Next, choose one half A4 booklet, 5 by 8. This will give us a template that we can use two pages to make an eight page booklet. Click on Create. Publisher now asks if we want to automatically insert pages. This specific template adds pages in groups of four. So if I click yes to automatically insert three pages, I'll have four pages to start with. And I want four pages to begin with. Now here's the front cover, two pages, and the back cover if we were going to make a four page booklet. However, we want eight pages. So right click on the fourth page and choose insert page. The dialog box that appears should tell us that it's going to insert four new pages after the current page and we want them to be blank pages. Click OK. Now we have eight pages. Cover page, inside pages, two through seven, and a back cover. Let's next insert page numbers onto each page of our booklet. Click on the Insert tab. Choose Page Number under Heading and Footer. We want the page number to be in the bottom right hand corner, so click this option. Now you'll notice by clicking on page one that it shows page one and a cover for a book doesn't have a page number on it. So we need to remove this first page number. Click again on page number and uncheck the statement show page number on first page. Now page one disappears and we have pages two through eight numbered correctly. Now that our mini book template is set up the way we want it with eight pages and pages two through eight numbered, let's add text boxes. Click on the Home tab. Click the option Draw Text Box. The cursor now changes to a little cross and we can click with the left mouse button and drag down to make a text box of any size we want. The default text will show as the option for font and size. Now we can type. This is a test text box. I don't want my font to be Calibri 10, however, so I'm going to change it. Left click and highlight the text. Go down just like you would in any other Microsoft Office program such as Word. Click on the drop down arrow next to the text font name. Find the text that you want to use. For example, Times New Roman and the font size is going to go up to 12. Now this text box is much bigger than my text, so with the text box selected, I can use my double arrow cursor at one of the edges or the corners to change the size of the text box to fit the actual text or to fit the page. I can stretch this text box out so it fits all the way across the page. And if I choose center as a paragraph option, 
it's going to center the text in just this text box across my entire page. Now when I click out of this text box, the box becomes invisible. Sometimes you do want text to be in a border of a box. So we click inside the text box, choose the tab that says text box tools. It's a tab that shows up after you've clicked inside a text box. This gives us all kinds of options for changing the text direction, how the text is hyphenated in the box. We can also change the text color itself. However, we want a border, so click on Drawing Tools Format. This will give us the option to change the background color of the text box and the shape outline. This is the option we click to choose borders. Pick the color that you want. There are standard colors, scheme colors. You can also make your own colors with more outline colors. So this text box is default settings with the color I chose. However, I want to change the weight of the text box. Let's say 2 and 1 fourth. And I also don't want a solid line. I want a dashed line. So I have all these options under the dash option. This text box can also be manipulated to fit the size of the text if I want and the text box can be moved anywhere on this page when the four arrow cursor is available at one of the side edges. Now let's go to page two and learn how to insert a table. From the home tab you'll see table as an object that can be inserted. Click on this option. Now I use my cursor to highlight the little squares to be the text box size of the table that I want. So if I want a three column, three row table, I highlight nine boxes in orange and just click on the last box I highlighted. It will automatically insert the table. However, it's invisible, so I'll need to change the border, line color, and the thickness of the border to my desired scheme. You're also going to need to change whether you want just the outside border or all borders to be shown with a line that's visible instead of an invisible line on your table. And when you have the four arrow cursor on your table, you can put the table anywhere you want to on this page or page three since this is a double facing page. Now after you've done a little bit of work on this document or maybe after you've set up the template the way you want it, it's really important to save this file so Publisher can help you recover it potentially if you lose changes that aren't saved. To save the file, click on the File tab. Go down to Save and choose the location. I'm going to save it on my computer on the desktop. Give it a name. The default name is Publication 1. And click Save. You'll notice that the type we're saving as is Publisher Files. This makes the document a .pub file, which means it's editable with Microsoft Publisher or perhaps a comparable software. Now let's learn how to insert images into a Publisher document. From the Home tab, click on Pictures. It's going to ask you if you want to insert from a file on your computer or do a Bing image search. We're going to click Browse to find a picture I have already on this computer. The default is to take a look at the Pictures folder on the computer. However, I downloaded my image from a website called pixabay.com. 
I find the image I want to insert, click on it so it's blue, and click Insert. Now, the image comes up in one size. I can resize it by using the double arrow button so it fits my page. And when the four arrow button shows up as the cursor, I can move the image to wherever I want to on either page. Like most of the other Office software options, I can crop pictures if I want to after I click on it. The handles show in the corner that would resize it. However, I need to click the crop option. So then I get black little lines as my corners and can then move the border to show just what I want to of the image and click crop again to save those changes. I can add a special picture style by hovering over it to see what it looks like and then choosing the one I'd like. Or I could add just a plain border. For example, dark gray. Once I'm finished adding information and images to my booklet, I need to save it. So I click on the Save icon or hit Control S to save the most recent changes into this .pub file. Oftentimes though, when sharing information, a .pdf file is the most convenient for people to be able to open across multiple devices. So to save the publisher file as a PDF, click on File, go down to Save As. Choose where you want to save the finished product. I'm going to choose the desktop of this computer. I can give it another name if I need to. So this one is going to be Test Booklet 2. And now we click Save as Type. You'll notice this has a small drop down arrow. When I click it, I get all of these different options of formats into which this file can be saved. PDF is about a fourth of the way down the list. I choose that option and then click Save. If I want to see what it looks like before I share it with anyone, I can click Open File After Publishing for it to automatically open as soon as I click Save. So this is what the eight page booklet looks like. This would be page one. You'll notice there isn't a page number. And page eight, this makes the cover of the book, the front and back cover. When I scroll down, pages two and seven are together and pages three and six. So if I print these, there's page four and five. If I print these double sided, I'll get two sheets of paper, eight and a half by 11 in landscape mode, that can then be collated and stapled to make a booklet.